I want to ask a delicate question, Dr. Farley, which is about how we carry this virus. I find it stunning how the nurses and staff of Mount Sinai are so relaxed after being in that milieu. Should we be relaxed as well when we're walking around? Well, I think you're seeing professionals who, you know, as you would see a soldier at war who can be relaxed in between the battles, uh, you can see healthcare workers relaxed in between those battles. Um, I don't think the public should take a sense of, you know, uh, uh, lack of urgency in our response. And I, by that urgency, I mean uh, continuing to be safer at home, continuing to social distance, physical distance. Uh, by no yeah. means are we out of this war. Beautifully said. So with that, there's this huge tension between lockdown and stay at home, the Wisconsin legislation that we've seen in the last uh, 24 hours. How do you perceive the gray area between a strict lockdown, stay at home, and getting back to normal? Well, I think you characterized it perfectly. It's this sense of gray in which... Um, you know, everyone is opening up in slightly different ways across the country, uh, across the world, um, and we really need to pay very close attention and be vigilant to how that opening up and how our change in our behavior, how our, you know, quite frankly, our, our decrease in social and physical distancing from one another, a return to work, is going to impact new cases. We, we anticipate that it will impact new cases, and yet... There are some painful decisions that have to be made in, as you've mentioned multiple times, the recession, preventing depression uh, economically and, and in many cases, um, you know, just saving businesses. So it, it is a delicate balance between being able to open up, expand the economic environment while, you know, also being vigilant to prevent ongoing transmission. Can we guesstimate, Jason Farley, how many people so far have had COVID, and how many of those people are immune? So the immune question is a very hard one at this point. We are doing, you know, investigators across the world are really struggling with, uh, you know, coming to grips with whether or not immunity will occur as a result of infection. For some people, we, we believe that it will, but we are seeing cases of relapse, reinfection, if you will. And so what's critical to understand is in these patients who have, you know, a, a supposed relapse, were they truly tested negative and repeatedly negative for the virus and, and basically became what we would call convalescent, so they recovered, and we, we can detect antibodies in those circumstances. And then we follow those people over time to see if reinfection occurs in those circumstances. We're actually launching a study in June to do exactly that at Johns Hopkins, to really follow people longitudinally for at least 12 months in a cohort of patients uh, to see if what the prevalence, what the incidence of the virus is in this 12-month period, particularly if we begin to experience a second or, you know, forbid, you know, um, a third wave of this infection. And so we're, we're really trying to be vigilant in our understanding of the potential for reinfection, the level of immunity that occurs, and what that ultimately helps us to understand uh, about the potential for this growing concern of a second wave. Are, are countries working together uh, to try and figure this out, or is it everyone for themselves? I, I think m much of the global community is working together. Unfortunately, I, I do believe that you know, from a U.S. perspective, uh, we have opted out of that global community in many ways. Uh, not only the rhetoric from the White House uh, about multiple uh, re responses from other countries, specifically, uh, of course, the focus on China, uh, but also uh, the global vaccine initiative. Uh, the U.S. has decided that we're going to go it alone uh, and not participate in several of the global vaccine initiatives, which um, is, is very nearsighted on our part. Um, I do believe, you know, we have our first trial starting here in the U.S. very soon. Uh, some ongoing trials, but it, John Hopkins specifically uh, in June, so in a few weeks, we'll have our first vaccine trials going. And in addition, um, you know, multiple different vaccine candidates, so it's not just one vaccine. 
um, while the rest of the world uh, is is moving ahead. And we know that in Oxford and other uh, locations around the world, we have seen you know the vaccine initiatives really take off. So I, I think we are being nearsighted in the U.S. response and not participating in global efforts.